Before we get things underway, Happy New Year to everybody who clicks on this video, any of the other videos we upload in the next few days, or any of the previous videos in the past few days too. It is now 2022 and I'm planning to go out there with the same motivation, same ethic, and same kind of content creation structure into the new year and I'm very excited to see what 2022 holds, not only for me, but for everybody on this community as well. So, Happy New Year to all of you lovely people. But the very first video of 2022 is going to go over a name that always arises some very particular memories whenever I think about him. This is a guy that 10 years ago in like NHL 12 or NHL 13 or something like that made himself an absolute stud because of what he did on Johnny 2BC Superman's YouTube series all those years ago when he was doing a GM mode or whatever it was. Let's talk today about if Guinea Dadanov. Now, I'm not going to be screaming his name out in this video like Johnny Superbman did all those years ago, but what we are discussing over here is the idea of a Dadanov trade. We're going over an article in Vegas Hockey Now, and it brings up a few teams that could be seen as potential suitors for one Evgeny Dadanov, who is currently a Vegas Golden Knight. So, here is our article. Let's take a look at this piece published by who is it? Owen Kreps. Five Golden Knights who could be on the NHL trade block to free up space for Jack Eichel. A link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this article. Go ahead and do that. So, this is the little intro that they have on this piece right here. They talk about the Vegas Golden Knights and the Pacific Division standings. They talk about the Golden Knights having the most games played. But then they talk about Jack Eichel. If you don't know who Jack Eichel is... Then, I mean, just go over any other video on this channel. Just search Eichel, like a rock sign, and then you'll find tons of videos about him. But he is a Vegas Golden Knight to be, and I say to be because he hasn't actually made his debut with the team so far. And this article is exploring the idea that when he does eventually debut, there will need to be some salary cap maneuvers to make sure that the Golden Knights are actually legal in terms of their financial structure. So... We still don't know an exact timetable for the return of Jack Eichel, but as time moves forward and as we enter 2022, he can only be getting healthier. For the Golden Knights, this is great news, as adding a generational talent, okay, I don't know about that, Chief, in Eichel to the lineup will, on paper, only make the team better. However, there are indeed some things they need to do as well. It's time to clear cap space for Jack Eichel. And not even just Jack Eichel, either. The Golden Knights roughly have about $5.3 million in cap space with Eichel, Alec Martinez, Nolan Patrick, and Jake Bischoff on LTIR when the Golden Knights inevitably get back both Patrick, Martinez, and can return Bischoff to the minors, things take a drastic turn for the worse, and the Golden Knights are suddenly $11 million over the salary cap. And so, here are five names on the team that I could see being moved to free up cap space in order to keep Jack Eichel on the team and make sure that everything is working fine. Evgeny Dadanov is our name that we're talking about here today. And before we go over into the write-up as to what they say in the article here, Evgeny Dadanov, 32 years old, 5'11", 185, he was drafted all the way back in 07, so he's been in this league and bouncing around in the KHL for a very long time, making $5 million a season till the end of next year. He signed that contract all the way back in 2020, and he's got a modified no-trade clause with it, so... This contract was given to him back when he was a 70-60 point player with the Florida Panthers. He had 47 points in 69 games played in the shortened year in 2019-20, 25 goals as well. So he was a really good point producer with this team, which is why the Ottawa Senators went out there and paid the man all this money to put up 20 points in 55 games last year. Eventually, he got traded over to Vegas in, I believe it was the, what was it, the Nick Holden deal? Yeah, that one still kind of blows my mind here today, just considering what Evgeny Dadanov was supposed to be and how quickly the Senators appeared to give up on him. But either way, he is on the Vegas Golden Knights making five million bucks. This is what the article writes about him. After the aforementioned flurry trade, one of the first moves Rekrimin made with his newly acquired cap space was to bring in scoring winger Evgeny Dadanov. Dadanov has been a mixed bag with the Golden Knights this season. The article brings up how his consistency has really been in question, and even though he has scored some clutch goals earlier on in the season, 
his point metric of 14 and 31 games played isn't really all too great. I mean, if you take a look at just the game log right here, Dadanov in his last 10 games played has five points. Dadanov in his last five games played has zero points. So that kind of illustrates just the level of consistency we're dealing with here when it comes to 32-year-old Dadanov. His $5 million cap hit also doesn't suit well for the Golden Knights, given that he would be hypothetically placed on the third line, with Pacioretty and Stone in the first line, and the Misfit line being the second line. Back in early December, I wrote a piece on why I think Dadadov is the most likely candidate to be traded for the Golden Knights, and I still think this is the case. The veteran forward still has two years left on his deal, and he could be of interest to some rebuilding teams like the Ottawa Senators or Detroit Red Wings. The Golden Knights and Dadanov would have to work out Dadanov's modified no-trade clause for this to happen. Now, I'm going to say this right here. When it comes to these two suggested teams, Ottawa and Detroit, they are in very different spots. I don't really know if labeling them both as just a rebuilding franchise is the most accurate way to describe it. Obviously, I'm being nitpicky because I am a Red Wings fan, but let's just go over the hypothetical trade idea of this player going to either of these two teams. I don't really know why the Ottawa Senators would want to go out there and reacquire this guy after just trading him away for Nick Holden earlier in the offseason. I mean, I get it. The Senators are not really doing all too hot this season, and they could use another score or two. Dadanov right now with his 14 points would be, what, seventh on the team in points? But that's just kind of the thing, right? If they need a score, I don't think Dadanov is that guy. He didn't really mesh all too well in the season last year, and now, playing in a role where you've got guys like Stutzla and Brown and Kachuk and Norris and Batherson all ahead of him in points, something tells me that if Dadanov gets cut and pasted onto the Ottawa Senators, he doesn't really move the needle for this team all too much. I mean, Tyler Ennis has the same production as Dadanov this season, and... To me, it's not more guys like Tyler Ennis or like Evgeny Dadanov that'll make this team significantly better. You're looking for other guys who are not 32 years old to come onto your organization and actually make an impact over here. Now, when it comes to the Detroit Red Wings, they're in a pretty interesting spot because, honestly, I don't really think the Red Wings are in a rush to go out there and add anything in particular. Yes, they are, I guess, a rebuilding team in the state of being a rebuild right now, but this team is really performing a lot better than most rebuilding quote-unquote teams are. The Red Wings have really gone out there and broken past all the expectations because everybody on this team that has the potential of doing well is doing well. Larkin, Bertuzzi, these guys are going out there dominating. Lucas Raymond is still first in the league in rookie scoring. Sider is out there too. He is third, I believe, right behind Trevor Zagris. This team is getting goaltending. This team is getting Admittedly, questionable at worst and pretty okay at best defense with guys like Danny DeKaiser and Mark Stahl. Of course, Sider is there too, but Sider is only one guy out of six. So there are indeed some very good moving pieces of the Red Wings right now. I don't really know if acquiring a Dadanov would be something that they would place a super high priority in. As we noted with Ottawa, Dadanov isn't really the best player this season. He's not the 70-point guy that he was all those years ago. And I say all those years ago, it was only two seasons ago, or excuse me, it was three, two seasons seasons ago he had that 40 point year this is one of those things where if you're able to get Dadanov on a trade and you're like okay we need you to be the Dadanov from Florida like you can get 20 25 goals again right do that here if you're able to guarantee that you're going to get that kind of player then okay I could see this trade actually working out but if you want to go out there and say that this is just the Vegas version of Dadanov with all the consistency issues and all the struggles that he has had to deal with so far, I don't really know if it's worth paying a premium at this point, nor do I really know if this is the kind of player that would benefit these teams, at least in the short term, because his contract only goes on until 2023. Plus the fact that his expiry date is coming soon, because I mean, he's definitely not getting any younger, and it doesn't really seem like he's getting any better either. I think the teams that could actually go out there and benefit the most out of a guy like Dadanov are the teams that really are already in a playoff hunt. Teams that just need that one final piece in their bottom six or in their middle six to really solidify themselves as being that team to go all the way. If Dadanov can be an acquisition for, let's say, a third or a second round pick for a playoff team, and he scores a game six winner in overtime to send this team to the next round, that to me is the ultimate value you could get out of this kind of guy. His consistency issues hold him back, in my opinion, from being a legitimate trade target for any team that isn't a guaranteed playoff contender. So when it comes to teams like Ottawa or Detroit, 
My opinion is they kind of don't really need to go after him, and I would be kind of surprised if they did. But either way, talk to me in the comments, what do you think? Do you agree with my take, or do you agree with the take of the writer on Vegas Hockey Now, Owen Kreps, over here? There is indeed a difference of opinion that is allowed to exist, so go ahead in the comments and tell me what you think. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99, and bye.